So, Gwen Lauren, you find yourself walking down the street, at the end of which is Athgar's house. I will go around to the back as a person befitting my lack of station would do. Okay. And uh, we'll knock on the door. There's a little bit of a pause and then the door opens and Athgar looks and he says, Gwen? It's me. Fetching. Come in. I figured you'd appreciate it. So I'll go in and take off the hat. Okay. Return it to him. Thank you. And he... Why the subterfuge? We're not advertising our presence. Well, I think the cat's out of the bag. Well, that and safety. Better safe than sorry. Yes, I had to sort of ask permission to leave as we had sort of agreed to all stay together. Well, the four of you agreed. I thought we weren't going to play those games anymore. I figured if I was in my hometown, I could move about as I saw fit. Were it anywhere else, I would have at least left, at least left a note. I think there are some amongst the group that would have preferred that you left a note anyway and who are probably not very happy with you right now. Well, then that is more fuel for the discussion I was already planning on having with them. Let me guess, you're leaving. I hope not. Okay, then what's going on? Well, it's been an interesting day. I realized that I was out of my depth and I needed another perspective. So I went to talk to Aloric. He mentioned that, but was most discreet, of course. He was hopeful, but he also made a couple reflexive remarks, honest in their surprise, that set me thinking about other things as well. Do you tell? Well. I mentioned to him that there were certain things happening which had led me to begin contemplating if I should step away. And I happened to mention that I wasn't exactly certain what I would do since I'm sure my father is furious at me for shirking my responsibilities here. And that statement made him laugh. And at first I took offense, but then he quickly explained something that had not occurred to me. That the that... responsibilities that my father set for me were guarding a gate to the inner enclave and preparing to marry whoever he chose for me. Yeah, and that's Aloric thought that extremely inappropriate for someone who will perhaps one day take over as Lord of the City. He said, in terms of preparing me for that, I would be better off to apprentice with Wiggy. 
He's not wrong. I bet this is not how your father prepared to lead. Oh, no. No, it is not. My grandfather had father out in the sands as part of an elite patrol. I've often wondered why I was not assigned a similar duty, but... I Maybe find... he feels it's more important that you, you know, marry well than actually develop leadership skills. Or maybe he just hasn't even really thought this through. Well, I've discovered that I no longer care as to the why. After I left Aloric, I came back here. I made arrangements to have my traveling wardrobe mended as some of it has gotten quite threadbare and packed a new set to take and sat down and began going over some of the correspondence that has accumulated since I was last here. And it suddenly dawned on me that there was a conversation I needed to have before I talked to any of you. And so I went to see my father. Wow. I can only imagine how that went. <laughs> Let's just say it didn't go how he thought it would. I teleported myself to his private study and sent uh, a messenger. Um, you met her. Uh, I used the same messenger to send the cap to Alorix. She was adorable. She is halfling, correct? I believe so. I didn't want to think that father had stooped to employing children that young. Would you be surprised? No. But saddened. But I sent her t to find him with a message that I was in his study and I would be there for an hour. And if he wished to speak, he should come during that time. That, in retrospect, may be the first time since he assumed the lordship that anyone summoned him on not his time schedule. Which might account for his coming in in a rage. Maybe. Um... He thinks that you all are very clever and that you all were the ones who came up with the idea for me to apprentice with Aralakis as an excuse to leave town. Once again, I couldn't possibly. And he began to dress me down as usual and told me that my days of uh, cavorting, how did he put it? running all over the place like some peasant wastrel's spawn. Ah, like me. He didn't say. Your name didn't yep. come up. And proceeded to tell me that I would return to my guard duties and that he was close to completing a marriage with a young noblewoman from Romani Keep. See. At which point I lost my temper. Something I try very hard never to do. But I had just had enough. And so I just yelled one word, enough. I might have magically amplified it a bit beyond my normal voice. But He started in again, and I just put my hands down on his desk and leaned in and said very softly, I said enough, and told him that I was done letting him belittle me 
and control me and dictate every single part of my life. Well done. I explained something that I don't believe had yet come to his ears based on his reaction that I had been places and seen things that he had never experienced, that I had suffered countless injuries and even died once. Oh boy. And I said, yes, I died. Arabelle brought me back. That was months ago, by the way. And I'm here, walking, talking, and finally deciding my own fate. And I explained to him what we had been doing for the last five weeks. At which point he accused me of being senile or doddering because the Thwilnu are not real. Oh. And... So I utilized a bit more magic and explained the sequence of events to him while shifting my form into those of the various Thwilnu, the various horrors, and our companions that were modified. Needless to say, by the end of that presentation, I believe he had become doddering too. Okay, remember when you all gave me hell for describing what we've been doing? Well, yes, but this is one of the leaders of the, of the land. He would have been notified officially. But perhaps without the graphic display of a visual. I felt that was necessary. I wanted to get through that shell of ignorance that he carries. Oh. Is he sane? Yes. And still very angry. But I explained that this is what I've been doing. I have not been cavorting. I have not been seeking to escape these pathetic responsibilities here, but that I have been working with a group of professional adventurers to save the entire land and to save an entire northern community, our sister city to the north. There are only two barbarian strongholds in all of Akathen. And then I said, and don't get me wrong, Father, If my clan needs me, I'll be here. If my city needs me, I'll be here. I remain loyal to Thunder's Edge and all her citizens, but I'm done being the target of your unhappiness. What was his response to that? Well, he was still reeling a bit from the presentation, and I thought, At that point, discretion was probably the better part of valor, so I decided that would be an appropriate point to depart. But I I did say one more thing that, if necessary, I will relate later, but it brought the color back to his face because he leapt to his feet and tried to chase me out the door, but I still had the hat at that point. And all he saw was a little old serving woman walking down the hall toward him. And I immediately curtsied and walked quickly as befitting a servant station and left. So what was the point of this visit other than to enrage him and tell him of your travels. The point was to make clear to him that I wasn't going to founder as a gate guard and let him marry me off to some politically strategic woman from somewhere else because I was actually out gaining more appropriate experience for ruling a city. And 
and would continue to do so, regardless of what he wanted. I'm not the lord of the city yet, therefore. My responsibilities are to those I choose to be responsible to. My clan, if they need me. My city, if it needs me. But I'm done jumping at Father's whim. I've seen too much and experienced far too much. Does that mean that you're committing to travel with us? Possibly. That hinges on the actual reason why I asked you here. Aloric may know me a bit too well, but I suppose that's what it means to be friends. He advised me to skip the flowery prose and to speak very plainly. I blame a good part of this on you. You were tasked <laughs> with... Please. You were tasked with taking care of me when we were growing up. And I don't think you liked me very much. Looking back, I don't blame you. It wasn't you. It was the situation. I was a servant. I mean, there's not much to like about that situation. Still, I have known some servants to bond quite closely with their charges. I thought we had a sort of bond. I... <laughs> well... I, looking back, know now why you encouraged me to read as much as you did. If I was reading, I wasn't running around and I wasn't bothering you. But read I did. Histories and fables and fiction. And that was what I knew of the world. And so many of my opinions about things were formed from those histories and those narratives. I've learned, sometimes painfully, over the last several months, that many of the things I learned from those stories are fanciful and not at all realistic. But they also formed my opinions on romance. And that's one area where our travels have not given me different insight. I've not seen many happy couples, save perhaps for Arabelle's parents. So that's part of what I wanted to talk to you about and part of what I need to speak with the others about as well. It's also interesting when a friend yells at you. Not yells, but makes rather pointed comments. 
And one of the things that Aloric made clear was that, in a way, I had set myself up in a servant's role with the four of you. Okay. I don't think any of us would agree. Mm. Well, perhaps it's simply that you didn't notice because it's the role I've been in since I started traveling with you. So it's simply how I've always been. But Aloric pointed out to me that if something was truly important, I was allowed to speak up for myself about it. And I haven't. So, this is the beginning of me starting to speak up for myself. Now, with regards you specifically, I think you know that I love you. What I wasn't prepared for was the actual falling in love with you. Oh. And I need to know how you feel about that. Well, I told you how I felt about you long ago, so... Yes, however... I was taught by my master that part of observing a character part of observing people was to listen to what they said but moreover to pay attention to what they did you have said how you feel but then you and the others react with mockery when I stumble, when I try to say things and fail because this is an area I have no expertise in. And that hurts. I apologize. It was never my intent to be hurtful. I think we have teased you because well, I can't speak for the others. I can only speak for myself. I have teased you because while I did speak plainly quite some time ago, you have not prior to now. And it is easier to make light of the situation than it is to 
admit that it's been difficult knowing that you have this information while I had no such confirmation of any feelings on your part. So it was easier to make a joke of it than it was to continue to wear my heart on my sleeve. Then I apologize. I accept my fault in that. It wasn't to say that it's your fault. I didn't want to pressure you in any way or make you feel uncomfortable beyond that of teasing. Honestly, teasing is the way that I have shown my affection for you most of our lives. I didn't really know how to act around you after your unexpected demise sort of made me realize that I felt more for you than just that of a friend. And I just didn't want you to feel burdened by any expectations you might have thought I had. I have had none. Hmm. I just didn't want you to feel pressured. Well, if you ever do have expectations, I'd like to know. I didn't think it was realistic to have expectations. You've really not indicated any interest until now. We, we haven't had a lot of time for such things. <laughs> In the midst of slogging through horror icker is not exactly the place to blurt out I love you. That is true. That is true. It's, it's an awkward situation in that I don't really want to have feelings for anyone. And so it's been rather uncomfortable having them for you and thinking you did not share those. So I've been trying to keep my distance since all of my prior attempts to show you through action backfired spectacularly and I heard about it from everyone and it essentially drove you away and to be clear when you said you thought that I didn't like you very much when we were younger that's not true. I liked you quite a bit. It's just when you have had loss, as I did, when you've been taken from your family, you don't want to depend on anyone because they could be taken away too. And as a person who had no power at all in that situation. I knew that with a snap of his fingers, I could be executed, banished, or simply just parted from you and I would have no say in any of the outcomes that Lord Tremaine might have in mind for me. So, it didn't seem wise to form any connections because they could be gone immediately. 
and there wouldn't have been a thing I could do about it. And yet, you managed to still wheedle your way into my affections despite every attempt I made to run you off and give you other things to do. I learned to read quite quickly. Well, at least something good came of it. Hmm. So don't think that I haven't always had affection for you. I have. And in many ways, that connection was the only stable thing I had. And I valued it more than I possibly knew until it seemed that you had died. I mean, you did die. And suddenly it became very clear to me how empty it would all be if you weren't there. Even if you were far from me, it it was just nice knowing that you were still around. And I could count on you, even though I didn't want to. I didn't forget that you brought the others, the rest of the four, to find me against your father's wishes. And no one had ever done anything like that for me. So it meant a lot. And by bringing these three women into my life, you've given me a different sort of family. And that meant a lot. Hmm. So I'm very grateful to you for these things. But there's also a part of me that is constantly waiting for you to take off, for you to be taken away, for you to disappear. And that is very, I guess, terrifying. That I understand. I experience that every time we, get, we engage in battle. I think, is this the moment? Is this the day when I lose her? Well, that's kind of lovely. I mean, sort of. I'm saying that at least I understand. So I would appreciate it very much if you wouldn't keep running away. I just came here. But we didn't know that. Well, you knew that the meeting with Aralakis in the morning was mostly my meeting. So you had to know I would be back for that. Assuming you hadn't been kidnapped, found by your father, thrown in a dungeon somewhere, we really didn't know where you were or what was happening Did with you. Did you really think that someone could whisk me away from the four home and no one would have heard? You were there. Bo was there. But perhaps you had wandered away and been snatched on the street. not in Thunder's Edge. Even were I to walk openly, this is one of the only places I would feel safe. So did your father. And look what happened to him. 
Yes. But Father is, I hope, significantly more arrogant than I am. Oh, I think you have your fair share. Agreed. Against. <laughs> but I would like to think it's tempered with some intelligence and some small amount of wisdom. I have learned an enormous amount in the last year or so. You have. You have indeed. And I know that you may have felt that you shouldn't speak up and share your thoughts, but do recognize that they were always welcome. So the thoughts of a servant are not welcome and yours have always been. We've asked your opinion. Perhaps you felt otherwise, but you have been, at least in my mind, as I can only speak for myself, just as important as any other member of this group. Well, I appreciate that. You've earned your place here more than you should definitely not feel as though you are less than anyone else in this group. Well, not less than, but different than. And that I've accepted because there is a bond amongst the four of you that I will never be part of. There is a separate bond that I am included in, and for that I'm grateful. But I know that there is a bond that is just the four. It's taken me a while to reconcile that. I hope that you don't think, though, that that means you're not valued. You're, you're very much valued. And I, I think I can speak for the others in saying that. I hope you're right. I know I'm right. We'll see. What is it that you are thinking about doing? I need to say to them something I've said to you that I do not appreciate being the source of everyone's humor, especially when it regards my feelings for you. Fair enough. I don't think that, I know at least for my part, that it was not clear that you had feelings for me. Well, it doesn't seem that others were taking seriously the possibility that I might. And again, perhaps it's because of the way my opinions of love and romance formed, but... Arabelle's last comment 
to me. I don't... I understand that there's a certain casual attitude towards sex that exists within the group. And it's a great source of humor. And with anyone else, I suppose that doesn't bother me. But the thought that were I to act on one of those offhand, almost caustic invitations of yours, that afterwards that would be the end. I don't like that. I... That would convince me to leave. Ah. Uh. I've seen... Well, I haven't seen. I've been adjacent to you choosing to spend time with other men. And that's fine. It, that is entirely your decision. But I have also seen a very casual attitude of almost like playing badminton. Well, that was fun. Maybe we'll do it again sometime. Ta. From me? Yes. Indeed. That is in keeping with not making lasting connections. You can't lose what you don't really have. I understand, but in the absence of any other information, thinking that that would be your reaction to us. I see. Scared me because I couldn't take it. Well, that would be different, I guess. When I've, when I made that comment, I will admit that I was thinking that if my feelings were not returned, then perhaps something casual would be better than nothing. And maybe that would make things better, was my thought mm. at the time. It was really Arabelle's comment about making it easier on all of them if we would just get it over with. As if that was the end goal of all of this. Once again, belittling the idea, at least in my ear, that there were feelings involved and that it was simply just something carnal that we should both just get out of our systems and be done with it. I see. 
I can see how you would hear it that way. And in all honesty, it's not that I haven't considered it. But I realized that the act itself wasn't the most attractive thing about it. But if all you were seeking was something casual, that what I was seeking wouldn't happen. I see. Well, what you're talking about is significantly more dangerous. <laughs> you think I don't know that? So... So there's that. Yes. Hmm. I suppose you... this is as good a time as any. The last thing I said to Father on the way out the door was that he shouldn't worry about my social status, that there was a woman I was interested in courting and that he shouldn't worry because she was a noble woman. Ah. I imagine this made him very unhappy. Well, everything I said to him made him unhappy, so it really didn't change the tenor of the conversation at all. I have a feeling that it would never occur to him that you might mean me. <laughs> Again. Hopefully significantly less arrogance and a bit more thought. It should. He has no doubt received the intelligence of your appointment to the noble courts. I'm hoping. And yes, okay, this is a bit cruel, but I'm hoping at some point he wakes up in the middle of the night having put it all together. And I hope it makes him yell. Would you think less of me if I said that I hope so as well? <laughs> Absolutely not. Oh, he has been nothing but a misery in my life. No. And I wish I'd... I wish I'd been aware of it sooner. I don't know if there's anything I could have done, but I would like to have tried. I appreciate that. That being said, though, um, I don't know how any of this would work with courting. We're kind of... Well, it's not going to be traditional. We won't be going to balls. <laughs> <laughs> we won't be taking strolls in the park with a chaperone. No, that's true. But and we're... I know nothing of courting. I, I know at... what I've read. <laughs> Does courting involve killing monsters together? Because that we can do. There were a few books. Teams, couples who adventured together. 
Really? Yes. Then you may know more about this than I do. Again, I know what I've read. But these were not histories. These were fictions. So I don't know how much credibility to place in any of it. Well, I do enjoy adventuring with you. I suppose this would be a sort of adventure? It would be a different kind of adventure. It would probably be more akin to figuring out noble culture than slaying orcs. But, on the other hand, we don't have to learn anyone else's rules. We just have to agree on our own. I actually like the sound of that, as I've not ever done particularly well at adhering to anyone else's rules, (laughs) whether your father's or anyone's and I spent too long adhering to other people's rules and I'm discovering that I quite like making my own so how does this work (laughs) I don't know I think that's something we figure out together. Well, the others are not necessarily expecting me to return to the four home this evening. And as you have made it clear, that you are not in favor of a one and done approach (laughs) to relationships. Would you care to have dinner? As I believe I left mine behind when I got your note. have not eaten I think that would be nice maybe we could even agree on what to eat would you like to go out or shall I summon a messenger and have them bring something I think we should stay in especially if you don't want to truly infuriate your father by appearing at dinner with only me and I'm not really looking forward to going out to dinner with you looking like someone else well I would assume if the two of us are together that would be sufficient security for us to appear as ourselves But then your father would hear of it. Gwen. And he reaches out and takes your hands in his. Where we are concerned, I don't care what my father thinks. He is not going to be part of this. I rather like that too. But perhaps it might be wise to keep this from him for at least a bit. Maybe until at least when we're out of town. <laughs> I I do worry that uh, 
after the way the two of you parted, reports that you have been seen in only my company might be met with, oh, I don't know, armed guards coming to fetch you perhaps and haul you back to- I'd like to see them try. You don't think he could force you to return? How could he? With all that I've learned and all of the magic at my disposal, how could he? When in almost the blink of an eye, I can have us clear across the country. You don't think he would ask Aralakis to intercede? I won't say that hasn't crossed my mind, but first, I don't think Aralakis would agree at this point. Secondly, and this goes no further, I think I could take him. You don't say. I know his mind. I've seen him work. I don't know that I could defeat him, but I do believe I could definitely escape from him. And as long as we wear these, and he holds up the the talisman, he can't find us. He could send me messages, which I could choose not to reply to. But again, I don't think he would accept that task. I think he might very well (laughs) explain to my father that I am no longer a child, that I am, for all intents and purposes, a professional adventurer, and that he would not want to waste the considerable magical effort it would take to force me to return. to think that, at least in some small way, I've earned his respect at this point. You have. I I think he's rather fond of you. Mm-hmm. Well, I can't imagine him turning on you. He was pretty angry, but I imagine most of that comes from the fact that in my absence, he has been the brunt of my father's unhappiness. Well, don't sell yourself short. I think that in large part, he was worried about you. The fact that your father took his ire out on him, I'm sure, didn't help. But I think he was genuinely concerned for your welfare. Hmm. He dotes on you. Otherwise, why would he have taken you on in the first place? It would have been infinitely easier to not. I do believe that he sympathized with my desire to get out from under my father's thumb. He knows better than anyone else who my father is and how difficult it is to get along with him. And yet, he still faced his wrath in order to help free you from it. We were both counting on Father being as hidebound as he is, and bound by 
several traditions, one of which is a ruler may not dictate terms between a teacher and their apprentice other than those dictated by politics. So knowing that sorcerers were taught the basics and then shoved out into the world, he couldn't oppose that, not without breaking his own rules. You boxed him in neatly. But only with Heralakis' help. Exactly. What will Aralakis think, since I know you do respect his opinion? I don't know for certain. Uh, relationships have not exactly been a topic of conversation between Aralakis and I. Although he has chastised me on a number of occasions in my life that I should stand up for myself and make my own choices. I would hope he would be proud of me for doing that. I'm sure Whether he, he agrees with the choices or not, I don't know. He's at least been kind, respectful. He appreciates competence. And you are nothing if not competent at what you do. Well, thanks. It's not a compliment, it's just a fact. You hold your own against a paladin, a sorcerer, and another bard. It's just a fact. Speaking of facts, how long have you known About your feelings? Oh. As I had not a clue. <laughs> Well, as I said, we had not opportunity, really. It was shortly after Vines and Safrina were taken. That night, I dreamed. And I dreamed a scenario where it wasn't Vines and Safrina, it was Vines and you. Oh. And I woke up realizing that a window had opened in my mind, in my heart. And <laughs> thus began the what the hell am I supposed to do now? And then there were Thromu. And then there were horrors. Yes, so many. And then there was an assassination. There's but, always something. But then we came here and Arabelle said that we would take a day. And Aloric said, make the time. So since this opportunity presented itself, I took it. I'm glad you did. I'm glad I did too. So, dinner? Where would you like to order from? surprise me you've been around long enough you know the things i like all right i shall return oh you're going out well i have to step outside to flag down a messenger 
Okay. Don't be gone long. As long as it takes to tell them where to go and what to get, and then I'll be back. Pretty good. 